everyone. It's so nice to see you today. Today for our math video, I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite math websites as a math teacher. It's called Open Middle, and you can go see it on the internet at www.openmiddle.com. So that's O-P-E-N-M-I-D-D-L-E. -E. And what it is, it's a math website where the problems are just that, open. But they're not open at the end. There is an answer or multiple answers to every problem. What's open is the middle. So it gives you the facts, it tells you the problem, and then how you choose to solve it is up to you. So you can get really creative with a lot of your solution paths. Okay, a lot of them require a lot of brain stretching. And then at the end, you will come up with your answer and you can check on the website to see if your answer is correct. So a little bit more about Open Middle. It's founded by Nanette Johnson and Robert Kaplinsky. It's a free online website where people can also write in some problems. They source whoever invented each one. Um, and sometimes they can seem a little easy at first, but they're not. A lot of them are pretty challenging, but they're never going to ask you a question at your grade level that's not taught in your grade level. So it's just a different way to stretch your mind. So if you see, oh, I just have to multiply these two numbers, no big deal, make sure you're reading carefully. Okay, so they have problems from kindergarten all the way through high school. So I'm going to hop on and show you a little bit of the tour of the website. Okay, and then we're going to solve two problems in our video. We're going to do a kindergarten example and a fourth grade example. Okay, so this is the Open Middle website. So before I forget to mention, you can change the language, okay, from English to either um, Spanish or French. And there is a submit button where you can submit some of your own ideas. So the website, as you can see, is just openmiddle.com. And you can see at home, Hey, this is the this is the home um, page where it just sort of um, shares favorite problems, how to share with others. Okay, some key things over there. Then what I normally go to as a teacher under each grade list all of the math domains for that grade, and you can click on them and find specific examples. They do have after middle school, just high school in general. Then there's an about section that tells you more about Open Middle. A lot of it just explains what I shared. Okay, about how. Um, how who it's founded by and how there's a definite close beginning and end but there's an open middle part where you get to solve and i'm going to show you kind of how to play around with it so if you're a fifth grade teacher or student you could go into each domain so there's operations and algebraic thinking for example you can see here lots of different problems okay and then you can read more about them to see so let's see in third grade okay we have operations and algebraic thinking number and operations in base 10 number and operations fractions, measurement and data, and geometry. So any of those for all of them. So if I go to kindergarten, um, go to geometry. Okay, let's see, describing shapes. So I click on that. Okay, let's see, use the following picture, complete the following sentences using the phrases above, below, beside, in front of, behind, and next to. So it gives you these pictures, and then it gives you these sentence starters. The cube is blank the sphere and blank the triangle. So you have to use some of these phrases to make that complete. Now, every single one also has a hint. Oh, this one does not have a hint. That's a bad example. Okay, most of them have a hint. And then they all share answers. And if the answers will vary, they will um, often either tell you there are other possible answers or they will give you all of the possible answers in some cases. Um, let's see, let's look at a first grade one. Um, so if I go to number and operations in base 10, okay, let's see, adding two digit numbers. Using the digits one to nine at most one time each, fill in the boxes to make the smallest or largest sum. So this is something you could easily just reproduce on a piece of paper. You don't have to have this printed out. You could just draw two boxes plus two boxes. And this is a very common direction, using the digits one to nine at most one time each. That means you can't have a two and then another two. That also means you can't use the digit zero because it's not listed. So when I'm doing this, sometimes I like to record all of the digits mentioned on my paper. For example, in this case, I would write down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then every time I use the digit, I would cross it out to remind myself I can't use it again. Okay, let's see. There should be a hint for that one. Again, almost all of them do have a hint. So if you're stuck, you can check out the hint. In the two-digit number, what does the digit on the left represent? What does the digit on the right represent? Hmm. So that's a hint for you to think, 
how can I make these really the smallest or the largest sum possible? And then I'm not gonna um, break it down now in case you would like to solve this, but there is also an answer where you can check your work, okay? Um, let's see, for third grade, I'll show some fractions. Fractions start appearing in third grade. So there's only two since you're really just beginning fraction work in third grade. But this one, identify a fraction on the number line. Directions, label the point where three-fourths belongs on the number line. Be precise, as precise as possible. So again, you could just copy that number line down on a piece of paper and solve it. So there's all sorts. If you can check out the grade you're currently in or parents or teachers, check out the grade of the students who you're working with. Um, you can look for a specific domain if you know, yes, we are working on multiplying, okay? And you can check out that one. Um, if you're not sure what standard to go to, like if you're like, I know I wanna work on adding, but I don't know which, I don't know where, if I look at all these, where I would find adding. Um, a website that I use all the time is corestandards.org slash math. Okay, and so when this comes up, it should hopefully will in a minute. My internet's a little slow. There we go. Um, this tells you all of the standards and everything that basically that your student will be learning in each grade level. So if I teach, if I teach or have a student in second grade or a child, okay, I can click on grade two and I can click on each domain. Here they are and read exactly what they do. So in grade two, in the operations and algebraic thinking domain, they represent and solve problems involving addition and subtraction with more details there. They add and subtract within 20, more details there. And they work with equal groups to gain foundations for multiplication. And there's more details there. And I would highly recommend the details. This, for example, talks about even and odd, which is a big concept in second grade, um, and building a race. So that is a really helpful website, again, corestandards.org slash math, that you can use to check out every grade level. Okay, so fourth grade geometry, and it'll tell you exactly what they learn. So if you're not sure, that's a good website to check into. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to open middle and we're going to solve two example problems for into a kindergarten and a fourth grade one. So you can join us for both of them or just one of them, depending on what you wanna do about math. If you wanna get a piece of paper and a pencil, I might recommend that because I would love for you to solve the problems along with me. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so let's do the kindergarten example first. So to find this one, I'm gonna to go to kindergarten. I'm gonna tab down to the counting and cardinality one. And then this is the first one available. It's called the 10 frame challenge. Okay, it looks like it was written by Elizabeth Bredenberg. She's the source for this one. So the question says, I have a horizontal 10 frame that has some counters on it. One row of the frame is full and one is not. What is the largest number I could make? What is the smallest number I could make? If you aren't sure what a 10 frame looks like, here's a picture. Okay, you may draw this on a piece of paper. You may just look on the screen, whatever works for you. You can also find free online 10 frames by just Googling 10 frames. Um, feel free to pause this if you wanna to try to figure out on your own. And then when you're ready, plus press play and we'll check together. As I said, there are hints. So I'm gonna say, if you're ready to start working, pause now. If you wanna hear the hint, keep playing. Okay, so the hint for this problem says, start by filling in one row of your 10 frame with counters. What does it mean to be the smallest number if one row of the tens, 10 frames is full and one is not? Okay, go ahead and pause and try to work on it. When you're ready, press play. Okay, so let's go ahead and check. I have a 10 frame up here that I use to help me. And the first thing I'm gonna do, it says that one row of the frame is full. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in that top row. Okay, there are five in there. Now my questions are, what is the largest or smallest number I could make if one row is full and the other row is not? All right, let's do the smallest number. So my top row is full. It does not say that I have to fill my other row at all. It just says one row of the frame is full and one is not. So in my mind, the smallest number I could make is just with that top row full and none of the bottom row full. So that number would be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, the smallest number we can make is five. 
Now the largest number, I definitely need to fill in some of this bottom row, but it says the bottom row is not totally full. So let's see, how many can I fill to get as full as I can without completing the whole row? I think what that would look like is if I fill in all but one of the spots in the bottom row. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. All right, this looks like as large as I can go off of filling what the problem says. Has some counters on it. The one row of the frame is full, that's the top one, and the other is not. Our bottom row is not totally full. Okay, what's the largest number I can make? Let's count. We know the top row is five. Let's count on from the bottom. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, the largest number I can make is nine. And if we go back and check in our website, yep, there we go. It says answer, smallest number, five, the largest number, nine. Okay, so now we're gonna do the fourth grade problem. So if you go to grade four in the tab and you go to the numbers and number and operations in base 10 tab. Okay, and we're actually gonna go to the second page. Uh, that's because the one, that, one of these activities I've already done with fourth grade and really liked it. So I dug down to the second page to find it. It's the one that's the second from the bottom. It's called multiplying a two digit number by a single digit number. And this source is Robert Kaplinsky, who's one of the founders of Open Middle. Okay, it says directions. Using the digits one to four, at most one time each, fill in the boxes to make the largest possible product. Okay, so I see a two digit number times a one digit number. If you would like to hear the hint, don't press pause yet. I'll read the hint in a minute. If you would like to try to figure out now without the hint, go ahead and press pause and then press play when you're ready to hear the answer. Okay, here is the hint for those of you who are waiting. The hint says, where do you want to put your biggest number? Where do you want to put your smallest number? What would this look like as an array? Okay, let's check. So, what I thought was, if I have the digits one, two, three, and four, I can only use each one one time. So I can't just do 44 times four. If I didn't have that rule, yeah, that would be the greatest product, but we can only use each digit once. So I have three possible digits, one, two, three, four, and I'm looking for the largest possible product. So I'm gonna throw one out the window. Okay, that's the smallest number. So that's the one I do not want in my product or in my, in my multiplication problem. It might be my product. So I have the numbers two, three, and four. If I arrange them, okay, there are six different equations that I can make. So I started by writing out all six equations that I could make, okay? Um, so I think, like one of the hints said, that I want four to be in the single digit spot because that's four groups of something. And if I put three or two there, there would only be three groups or two groups of something. But I'm not totally positive, so I wanna actually double check that. So I'll start with fours. I could do 32 times four, or I could do 23 times four. Okay, now between those two, there's one that's obviously going to be greater. 32 times four is going to be greater than 23 times four because it's 32 groups of four instead of only 23 groups of four. So I'm gonna cross out 23 times four. That's, I'm already crossing that on my brainstorming. That can't be the largest product, okay? Next, I have times three. So I could either do two and four are the other digits left. So I could do 24 times three or 42 times three. Again, looking at both of those, I know that 42 times three is going to be greater than 24 times three. 42 is greater than 24, and they're both multiplied by three. So I'm gonna cross out 24 times three. Finally, times two. I'm not predicting these to be the greatest because you're only doubling the number, but just to double check, I could either do 43 times two or 34 times two, okay? Since three and four are my two digits that are still available. And between those, I know that 43 times two is going to be larger then 34 times two. So I'm gonna cross out 34 times two. Okay, I am left with three possibilities. 32 times four, 42 times three, and 43 times two. Now, before I actually get into multiplying, I thought the next step would be to do some estimation. Okay, so 32 times four is close to 30 times four, if I round 32 down to 30. 
and 30 times 4 is 120. So that answer is going to be close to 120. Okay, let's look at 42 times 3. Hmm. 42 rounds down to 40. 40 times 3 is also 120. So that, that product will also estimate to be about 120. Right? And then my last one, 43 times 2, 43 rounds to 40. 40 times 2 is 80. So that estimate is only 80. If I look at my three estimates, 120, 120, 80, I can easily cut out the, the product that had an estimate of 80. So 43 times 2, bye, you're gone. So now I only have two problems left. I am predicting that 32 times 4 will be the greatest answer because you get to multiply that number four times versus three. But I'm also noticing that 42 is certainly greater than 32, like looking at the two numbers at the top. So I'm going to now solve each one. So now I've narrowed it down only two multiplication problems I'm going to do. Solve each one and then see. I could use area model. I could use partial products. I could use a standard algorithm. Okay, in this case, I'm going to use area model because these problems look really similar. Okay, so if I solve 32 times 4 on this side, I'm going to break up that 32 into 30 and 2. 30 times 4 is 120. 2 times 4 is 8. That product is 128. Now on the other side, 42 times 3. Okay, I'm going to split up 42 into 40 and 2. Well, times 3. 40 times 3 is 120. 2 times 3 is 6. That product is 126. Oh man, those were only two apart, so they're very similar sizes, but 32 times 4 equals 128. That is the largest possible product that we can make, 128. So I used some reasoning. I didn't just try any combinations we had. We were able to eliminate all but two of them using either estimation or um, mathematical reasoning. And then let's check on the website here in the answer section. Yep, 32 times 4 equals 128 is the biggest product. So that's another problem that you could solve a fourth grade example on open middle. Okay. I'm glad you got to stay along with me through those two okay. examples. If I'm glad you, you got to stay along um, with me I just through those two you examples in a fourth grade example. Um, um, I just showed you the kindergarten and a fourth grade example, example but there are examples all the way up to high every grade like level from kindergarten so, all the way up to high school. Definitely feel like free to explore. So they have questions from almost feel free every to domain, explore. geometry, they have questions from almost every domain, geometry, fraction, measurement. Again, it does not go actually above or below the grade level. Again, it does not go actually above or below the grade level. They tend, really but they tend to be more challenging because it really requires you to think. They tend to be more challenging because it really requires you to think. That's what I really like them as an straight teacher. solve a problem. Feel free to check it out online. Again, it is www. Again, it is www. Open. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do. I have gotten great use of this website over the years. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I do. I have gotten great use of this website over the years, both in my classroom and my own math today. Tomorrow there will be a field trip. Well, that's it for today. Tomorrow there will be a field trip. Not sure where yet, but be sure to now, tune in and I can't see, wait to tomorrow. see you soon. I miss for now, you all. I can't wait I to see well. you soon. I miss you all.